Hi everyone. Today is my first day of painting the enthusiasm slash communicator mural. As you can see, it's laid out behind me, all 30 feet of it. Let's see if I can get to the bottom. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and repaint the turquoise background and the black road because they both need some more another coat. Every every color needs two coats to cover the canvas completely. So I'm hoping to lay that in today, let it dry, possibly put in some of the large animals. So that's my plan. After the large animals, I'll draw in all of the smaller animals and then we'll just get started painting it all. Echo, echo. and there's the polar bear. They aren't all completely done. I just kind of painted their the majority of their body and then I'll fill in the detail a little, long, a little later. Right now I'm going to be starting to place the little animals. I've actually already placed um, the line drawing of the little animals on the canvas in the position that they're going to be and I wanted to show you a little bit more about how that works. Um, I'm going to turn my camera around so you can see better. All right, so here I am. This is my setup. I have my tent set up, so I'm in the nice shade. And I have the actual drawing of the mural here. And then you'll notice I have all these little pieces of paper taped in with blue on the canvas. And those are the actual little drawings that um, I traced from the drawings that you guys made on those big white pieces of paper. If you remember, uh, when we were working on the concept and design, we were doing, we were working on those big, large pieces of white paper, and you guys were drawing your animals, right? Both second and third grade. And then what I did is I took those drawings from the white paper and I traced them on this tracing paper. And because I wanted to, as much as possible, transfer the actual drawings that you guys have made onto the mural. But there are some instances where the drawing, the animals should be much larger than they uh, were drawn originally by the student. For instance, this, my cheetah here, who fell off, I gotta replace him. My cheetah has to be a lot bigger than the actual drawing, right? The drawing is about, the cheetah is about the size of my hand, the length of my hand. And the cheetah needs to be much bigger on the skateboard. Here he is on the actual mural. So you can see the cheetah's rather large and he's right kind of in front of the dinosaur. And if I put the actual cheetah on the mural, he'd be super tiny. So I wanna turn him the other way because he needs to be facing in that direction. And I'm actually gonna to have to draw the cheetah by hand and cause he's gonna to have to be somewhere around the bottom of the dinosaur's feet to around over here. And this little snail must, has to be a lot smaller, right? So 
some of the students' drawings, I need to adjust the size, either smaller and larger. Some I will be able to actually draw uh, right onto the canvas. For instance, this owl is the perfect size for this spot, and I'm getting ready to draw him on the, on the canvas um, right from the student's actual artwork. So what I have underneath the owl drawing is this paper called graphite paper. And if you watched the Perseverance making of video, you might have seen me talk about graphite paper. It ha it's regular white on one side. On the other side, it's this gray color because that's the graphite, like a pencil lead. And I put the pencil lead part facing on the surface that I want to transfer the image. I put the image on top of that. And I'm going to be taking a pencil and outlining the whole drawing. And when I take this paper off, the drawing's gonna be there. So, let me try a little bit. See if I can try a little bit with you guys and I'll show you what it looks like. So I would just draw right on top of the actual drawing, trying to recreate it as close to the student's artwork as I can. I'm not gonna do the whole drawing because this is a little awkward. Let me see if it transferred. So there you can see how it transfers onto the canvas, right? So now I have the drawing on the canvas when I go to paint it. Uh, and that's a real easy way to, to, to make the drawing really fast and to actually kind of keep the integrity of the original drawing that the student drew. All right, so my goal by the end of the day is to have all these little pieces of blue tape with animals um, drawn on the canvas so we can start painting the small animals. All right. for the elephant. I wanted to give him a little texture, kind of like the bumpy skin quality that an elephant has. So I decided to, I thought of these things that we use underneath our rugs. We put them down underneath our rugs to stop our rugs from slipping. So I, I had one in my garage and I cut a little piece of it and I paint it with the color I wanna use. And this color is over here. It's more of the darker gray that I used on the horse. Um, and it's a little, just a shade darker than the elephant color. So what I do is I paint on it and then I go up to the elephant and I put it on the elephant and I press it on like that and then I peel it away and I have some texture left on the elephant. And I just thought that would give it a little extra something special. I've really been kind of stuck a little bit in the last week I mostly worked on the large animals because I wanted to be really purposeful with my color choices for the little animals and I just didn't want to go crazy with color and do all different types of color because um, I just wanted to have this mural to have its own particular flavor and flair. Uh, and my fourth grade mural, the creativity mural, is full of all different types of colors so I didn't want to have that be a repeat for this one. So what I did is I kind of went back to, um, I'm going to move this around so you can see some of the stuff in the background. I kind of went back to all those notes I had taken when we had met together um, with the classes and I went, I picked up some colors in all of the classes that kind of were repeating through all the classes and I think I'm going to follow that kind of palette through here so we have a nice really kind of strong statement for the little animals and then the larger animals are a little bit more subdued. Their size helps them stand out because they're so much bigger than little animals so I wanted to give the little animals some kind of flair, some kind of um, pop on the mural and make it all kind of very unique to the other two murals that we're doing at school.
All right, everybody, a very important day. I have officially finished painting all the animals. I think there's around 40 or so. I've lost count. Um, but all little details are painted. Everything's done. The only thing I have left over to do is to touch up this minty part here. And I have to touch up the uh, background, the black road, because it kind of got some, just some pencil marks and maybe some paint drips and stuff and just some dirt smudges. I want to get that all nice and cleaned up. And then I'm going to pull it off the wall and I'm going to lay it flat on the ground um, to write the lettering in, right? So I have to write lettering in here. You can see I've kind of started the lettering here. This is the end of communicator. And on the other end, over here, you can probably see I have some of the lettering in for enthusiasm. And I need to uh, paint those in on the ground with it flat. And I'm going to use a special bottle technique that I have. It's like a, a squirt bottle, like a ketchup bottle. And I snip off the top and I use it kind of like a writing implement. And that's how I write the, the words. And I have to uh, do that with it flat. So after that is done, then I will tape off the border, paint this color on the border, and maybe do a few more details. And I'm officially done. So I'm thinking end of day tomorrow. Today is Tuesday the 12th of May. I'm thinking hopefully, fingers crossed, end of day tomorrow. Uh, I might have it finished. So today we are starting the um, lettering on the third and second grade mural, the Enthusiasm Communicator, and I'll show you in a second the tool I'm using and how it's all going to play out. And you can see in the background we're working, me and my assistant Lane, say hi Lane, hi. are working on creativity as well in the background, so we're kind of um, doing two murals together. So. I use this kind of, looks like a ketchup or a mustard bottle, to put in my lettering for enthusiasm and communicator because it just goes a lot faster and it's like writing with a pen. And I'm beginning to do the taping off also after I write in the letters of the border and that's going to help me make a really clean border color around all the way. Um, so as you can see here, I've begun to tape off the border as well, so I can put the last color around the border and then any lettering I'm going to do on right the Today I have to work inside on my 
deck because the wind is so, you can see it in the background, it's really crazy, it's blowing up and the wind has been, there's a lot of wind right now, so the mural's been blowing and, and it's a little hard to kind of paint carefully and work with the wind, so my deck helps me keep the wind at bay. Um, uh, the last thing I'm putting on are the little words that we had talked about in class, communication and animal sounds. Uh, when we drew our animals on one of our planning days, we talked about the sounds uh, that animals make and how that's their way of communicating with everyone. So if you remember, we made this whole list of different sounds that we thought the animals made, and then we actually looked up some sounds too, and I have about 46 sounds, 47 sounds, that I'm gonna be placing on the border of the um, canvas. And I'm using this handy dandy pen, it's gold. My, my border is kind of a goldy yellow, and then I'm using this gold colored pen. And it has a kind of a rather thick. Top to it. So. You're such a night. Sweet confusion under the moonlight. Such a night. Such a night. Somebody else will. If I don't do it, you know somebody else will. If I don't do it, you know somebody else will. If I don't do it, you know somebody else will. And it's such a night. It's such a night. Such a night, such a night. You're seeing in these not only actual words that in the English language we associate with animals, but also the vocalizations as the students interpret them. And then I wanted to show you on the sides of the mural. So the top and the bottom is the animal sounds. On the sides of the mural though are ways humans communicate. So on this side it says, and, and not only vocal ways, but um, demonstrative ways, right, with our actions. So uh, on this side I put chat, love, share, give, take, listen, care, and cheer. And on the other side I had stuff like laugh, hug, kiss, high five, shake hands, stuff like that. I want to say a couple last words, sentences about the project. This one uh, is my favorite in that the visual, the visual imagery is 95% the students, right? Your guys's. One of the things that struck me right at the beginning of our planning sessions when we started to get into some of the drawing was how great your drawings were. You had some really strong visual animal images and that's kind of what got the ball rolling for me to think about hey this mural has to be all of their own drawings and, um, we talked a lot about what the students thought enthusiasm was and what made them enthusiastic and so lots of great stuff came up like cupcakes and um, music playing music and um, and all of that is kind of reflected in the mural, like the penguin is holding cupcakes and the cupcake drawings are from a student. And, uh, and so I just wanted to kind of let you know that because one of the things uh, I talk about in the last um, 
uh, video I made for the other fifth grade mural was the idea that everything in the mural I communicated to the students should have some sort of meaning. Nothing should be kind of random. So I really wanted to include as much of the, the source of the kids' thoughts and feelings and artwork that I could. So almost everything pictured came from a student's, you know, observations or drawings or participation in the class. And Even the border that I painted around uh, the whole mural, the yellow border with the words, I got the idea to do that because room four, Miss Chen's room, um, one of the planning sessions, they I had them draw their drawings, the animal drawings, and then for some reason I decided to have them like frame it. How would you frame your animal drawing? And their frames are so great around their animals. I almost wanted to do a mural of just that, like their pictures with their frames around them. But it gave, gave me the idea of putting a frame around the mural and then putting the lettering in the frame to kind of mimic some of the line work that they had done uh, in the frames around their animals. I hope you enjoy this video and I can't wait to put it up at school. And that's it for now. Thanks guys.